Hello dear viewers welcome to my show science thursday in today's episode we're going to discuss a topic of water jet cutter a uh, overview so let's try to get into it well first we have to understand water power now why do we want to use water as a cutting material well simply put it's everywhere basically everywhere there is human there is water or otherwise human wouldn't be there so water in terms of abundance it's all already there it's not like argon or like oxygen or something like that it's very easily readily available on top of that it is very powerful in its natural state so to say like you can see like it can erode mountains roads a whole village a whole town or even a city if it wants to so you have to understand water is very powerful now if you take that water and you pressurize it then it becomes deadly now to give you a context of that like as early as 1800s humans used water in high places aka like a pond on top or a lake on uh, mountain tops uh, drain water from that like around 100 meter below or 200 meter below and that water was so uh, high pressure so powerful that it was used to uh, you know grind mountains away basically and like that was the early forms of mining so you can understand the water is very powerful if under pressure so we utilize that to do our work so how does this quote and quote water jet uh, cutter works well we take water and we pressurize it now generally we measure psi uh, like you know uh, pressure in psi so in this scenario psi can go as low as 600 as high as to 40000 to even 6 uh, 60000 to 90000 psi it's ludicrous basically <clears throat> so we put water under tremendous pressure now on top of that uh, water in itself is very powerful at that state however it will not be a very effective cutting tool against very strong material like uh, let's say you want to cut against marble granite steel titanium things of that nature yeah they will still pose a threat to turbocharge uh, water's cu- uh, cutting ability we add what we call abrasive basically a coat and coat sand so we add that now again it's not a sand it's not a silicon based generally they are uh, uh, some sort of stone based so we add aggressive and then we get more cutting power now once you have high pressure water mixed with this it can cut through almost anything known to man basically which includes uh, diamond also so then the question becomes how the heck you channel such kind of power if it is that powerful well we take the water we pressurize it now we do not pressurize it to ludicrous level right there so what we do is like uh, uh, come uh, like you know bring it to your cutting piece basically wherever you want to do the cutting and we constrict it like we, we force it through a nozzle same as a uh, rocket engine now this nozzle is made made out of generally ruby or diamond now you have to pay attention to this one part so far the water is just pure it's basically distilled water if you can use it or uh, filtered water so it is does not have the same amount of grinding power benefit of that this will last at uh, the moment it becomes a jet now it has the cutting force and all that we add sand after that we basically we add the uh, basically uh, abrasive there the moment we add it the combination goes out now you have to understand that this even though it's like you know it's a uh, dealing with like you know quote and quote calmer waters it still erodes over time even this part you have to change everything here is uh, non consumable but this is a consumable you have to change it every like you know every uh, depending on uh, quality and material uh, grade and all that they will be like yeah every 40000 hour you have to change it or every 40 hours so we have the water turbocharge it using this and then we add uh, basically aggregate to turbocharge it it's cutting power and what can it cut that depends on the geometry design and pressure levels and all that but tldr would be anything as long as you have enough power so that's how it works all these things are done by uh, basically pumps electrical pumps are generally used because that allows you to control the cutting power because you really don't want to waste electricity if let's say you are cutting aluminum you don't want to be as high pressure that is like you know that can cut through steel you are wasting energy so we we want some control that is why generally electrical pumps are used now why do we want to use basically water jet cutter we already looked about a cnc mill we already looked about a laser cutter we already looked about plasma cutter why the heck we want to use water as a cutting material well there are many materials that simply do not like thermal stresses there are very specific metal alloys they really don't like to be heated uh, and there are some other aspect for aesthetic reason let's say you want to make a counter top for a, you know high end luxury home and you want to you know cut a water sink hole awesome no problem but if you did that with a basically laser that whole area would be scorched 
and nobody likes that like if they are paying you you know million dollars or something like that for their home they don't want a scorched uh, you know counter shop for that reason many things don't like thermostats and there are other uh, reasons also because if let's say you have thin material it could warp even with laser power it could just warp because it e even though you are cutting it like let's say in a very specific place uh, once you go long enough enough heat would have seeped into it it will warp the material so there are many reasons for that like even for thin materials people use water jet on top of that it's not a fire hazard so you can understand that plasma cutters uh, have a habit of set, setting almost anything on fire so fire hazard is again it's not a big deal because anybody who's uh, dealing with plasma cutters generally are smart enough to handle that but again okay, it's a just a you know reduced uh, insurance cost now it can cut through anything now this is the main reason this is the bread and butter of uh, basically a water cutter because let's say you want to cut carbon fiber again you can use a laser but problem is because of the carbon's nature inherently uh, it's a quote unquote carbon and black it will react very strongly to laser so you will have heating damage uh, you may want to use plasma but here's the plasma will not work on non-conductive materials so flat out the only option you have either use cnc mill which will grind it up and eventually heat it up or just use water cutter so that is why uh, it can generally is classified as it can cut through almost anything and it through a very high thickness it does not suffer from the same limitations as laser cutters like laser cutters you have to have 10 kilowatt laser output before you can reach a point where you're like yeah i can cut through one inch thick material this puppy they can cut as thick as like a uh, one foot to three foot like uh, they're very powerful basically so that is why people use water pressures no thermal stress low fire damage and uh, it can cut through anything and it's very cheap the whole machine is so cheap that i have provided a, a youtube video link down below that you can see people have built it in their home so it's not something that is like you know you have to have phd to build it it's something doable now what are the benefit of doing this let's say you bought the machine what are the benefit that you are getting well first it can cut soft material now you might be like okay shouldn't cutting soft material would be easy task well you have to understand it this way let's say you have foam you use laser on it that's a fire hazard you can't use plasma and if you use cnc mill or saw which were used in earlier days the problem is the uh, cut quality will not be very nice because every time saw is doing like this uh, you know uh, saw and all that it will tear apart the fibers so you will not get a clean cut so we generally use water cutter like you can get like it's a very precise cut so for that reasons you can cut through like if you want to cut a rubber you want to cut textile or you want to use uh, it on uh, meat industry meat industry also uses uh, you know a, a water cutters and all that so that is a very critical advantage like in software if you want to make sure you are cutting something soft uh, something uh, squishy and all that water cutters like i got this so that is one very critical advantage then it can cut not non-conductive material because in terms of cutting force plasma is very powerful but it cannot touch stone granite or anything like that so flat out right there like uh, many custom industries will be like yeah dude i can't do anything with this so let's say you're making tiles or marble statues and all that you can't use uh, you know plasma and all that so that is another aspect on top of that it can handle uneven surfaces anybody who's dealing with laser will uh, tell you first thing laser focus is a very critical thing so we generally keep laser as a beam uh, like till the last point the moment we reach the final nozzle quote unquote laser uh, nozzle and all that then we have the focuser now that focuser focuses it on a point awesome that point you get perfect cutting but if that point is off by even as little as like you know one centimeter your cutting will be uh, gibberish at that point again it's not that it's not gonna cut it's just that instead of getting a clean cut you're gonna get a splotchy uh, block or you may even uh, cause thermal melting in that place so you can understand it is, uh, lasers are very intolerant of like surface shortness. so like you have to give them flat material otherwise they will be like no and in same goes with plasma plasma is a bit more like you know forgiving but it's still uh, not something where you can have like a lot of uh, uneven surface water cutter simply does not care it's like you put it uh, you know bowling bone is like i got this you put whatever you put in there is like i, I take i can take care of this so that is a very uh, comfortable advantage let's say you're dealing with a lot of stones and quarry and all that you don't have to spend time processing it now all those things those are good ad hocs those are like you know that's good enough the final nail in the coffin, the final reason why so many people use it, even in metal industry where they can use plasma cutter, is the edge quality. Because while laser does give better edge quality, it's ludicrously expensive. It's like it's so expensive that only right now, as I'm speaking to you, the best result I can say, like there is barely five to six hundred laser cutter that can reach 10 kilowatt power output. 
so you can understand that uh, and lasers have the best uh, edge quality and plasma has a horrible so plasma horribility simply means you have to spend time like you cut your material you have to spend time grinding it polishing the edge so you can send it to the welding phase here you will get very clean edge cut now if you are buying from a reputable manufacturer any you know reliable sources and all that they will give you something like this so this is generally card defining what kind of cut quality you can get q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 and it's uh, similar to like a grit basically the smaller the number uh, basically the bigger the number the more polished output you will get so at q1 is still better than plasma at q3 it's like you you can literally run your finger through it and you won't even feel it at q5 it's like a, it's at that point it's a same as laser thickness so you can literally cut a part metal part and you don't have to grind it you can just directly send it to welding parts so that is a very critical time saving and it is more or less same cost as plasma so that flat out is the primary reason why so many people use it first you can deal with soft material you can deal with even material and if you are cutting metals you can get a very high quality cut cut surface out of this so these are the reason why people uh, li like the system so okay if people like it there must be some side effects to this well absolutely first it's very expensive now again you might be like didn't i just say a few seconds ago it's cheap well the machine is cheap the running cost is high that is the critical aspect with this plasma has electrical cost lasers have electrical cost but that's kind of it that's like yeah that's that's your primary concern you will have gas consumption you will have some cooling system and all that those will be like you know secondary you will not worry too much about it because your primary will be like you know big chunk of it now here it's completely different not only you have to worry about water not only you have to worry about uh, uh, basically electricity those those two things you are consuming liberally on top of that you have to worry about coarse uh, abrasive basically this abrasive cannot be recycled I used to think like you can just filter it out of the water and uh, recirculate it because it's going through the material like you are grinding it it is also getting grinded away so it is also becoming smooth so you uh, uh, the moment you get the clean bag it will be like very coarse after it's a run through the machine once just once it will become like a soft sand so you have to understand that like any place where they are cutting continuously they will have like truck load on these uh, like you know as a consumable so that it does increase cost it increases cost to such a point that any laser cutting machine they will flat out say per inch cutting cost basically like a are you cutting one inch thick steel they will say like yeah one dollar per inch so yeah it is very expensive that is the reason why you don't see it everywhere even if people have to have grinding stage for many people that is acceptable compared to like you know bags and bags and bags and trucks and trucks and of uh, basically abrasive that they have to spend so it is not something that is like you know you buy and forget it's not like laser adjust electricity bill or plasma or something like that it it does have tangible running cost so this is the primary reason on top of that it's kind of messy now lasers is the best cleanest because it does not make too much noise it does not create too much spark and with a fume extractor you good like you good like that, that's the best advantage plasma it's a fire hazard and it's very noisy and sparkly and electrically also noisy so equipment electrical equipments around it will not work very effectively now this also has another aspect it's electrically it does not care too much however it does have water on top of that it's just not that water like okay you have water splashing around and it will evaporate over time that's not what's gonna happen because it has sludge in it basically the material you grind it away plus the aggregate uh, aggregate i'm saying the abrasive so you can understand it's like a muddy is saying any place you where you can see this generally that area will require too much cleaning to like you know maintain again you may not care about it but again it's just something that you have to worry about because let's say you have a factory floor and you have five six of machines uh these machines are running around you have to you know uh, double check it basically because let's say workers are running around and because of the water the floor becomes slippery that's a dangerous workplace so it is something that you have to uh, worry about the primary oopsie is like uh, the cost of uh, basically cut per inch <laughs> that is like the primary whoops and uh, another aspect is just it's messy it's not as clean as you would think the output is clean but the work machine is uh, ugly so to say so this was my uh, brief overview about the water jet cutter i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i'd urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me your extra disappointment and please leave a comment because i reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching